Hey guys, welcome to Texas, South Texas. These next couple episodes, we are hunting giant whitetail, big giant whitetail deer, possibly some axis. Odds are low there, but we're gonna give her a shot. We're gonna bring you along. We're gonna do some broadhead testing and we're gonna get some, we're gonna stack some meat for the freezer. Uh, there's gonna be some incredible footage. We are hunting amazing whitetails in South Texas. A first for me, I wanna share it with you. Austin, Texas. It's looking to be beautiful. I can't wait to take this mask off. Gonna go hopefully find my luggage with my bow and meet Will Cooper and Numa. I'm gonna destroy your targets. Huh? I'm gonna destroy your targets. I don't shoot field points. That's okay. They're done. That's what the morale's for. Oh, we yeah. are going to head to the ranch where Elk Shape Camp is gonna get hosted. Check it out, do some touring. And then we're gonna head out to another ranch meet up with a couple other recon team members and go chasing after some big whitetail, man, with their bows. Bam, bam. Where are you from? Washington. Here we are in Texas, end of October. I got a cold. This is a hybrid from Grim Reaper. It's kind of got the same two blades and chisel tip as what I like from micro, the micro Hades that Grim Reaper makes. This is a 125 hybrid. Not a huge like cutting diameter with the fixed blades, probably inch and a 16th. So that same blade ankle, it's not rear deployed. It's gonna open up and make arguably a really good hole. And I'm wondering if I can use these on elk. So I wanna test their flight and then I wanna test them on real animals. Welcome to South Texas. I'm a guest of Numa Outdoors. We are hunting on one of the owners' ranch. It is a private ranch. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to hunt here. I have the green light to shoot Axis bucks. I have the green light to shoot whitetail doe. And I have a green light to shoot a management buck. The buck has to be mature and the buck cannot be a top caliber buck off the property. We're gonna have to get approval from the ranch manager on any buck we see. This is our first sit and we obviously see a lot of nice deer and a couple of no-go off-limit deer. This was an incredible first night. I could not believe the deer densities. Opportunity wise, Texas is all private for the most part, especially around here. And they're ranch after ranch after ranch. Some ranches are hunting ranches. So it's a business and the deer are looked at as like, you know, like their, their product and there's a value to these deer. And so that's kind of the Texas vibe. It's a culture that's all new to me. Uh, this one, this ranch has a fence that is high where deer cannot leave this ranch. This ranch is 3,000 acres. The name of it, I don't even know. Whoever owns it, this is just one of the ranches they own. There's a ranch hand down over here working his tail off. They do aerial surveys. There's like deer management programs with Texas Parks and Wildlife for Fish and Game. And they'll do aerial surveys. They'll study how much deer there's actually here, buck to doe ratios, uh, deer recruitment, predators, uh, all that kind of stuff. And they'll figure out how many deer they can take off the property um, to get the things where they want them. I don't know the history of this place. I just know that there's a lot of deer here and there are 
deer that are probably like crazy huge, like 170 inch plus deer, like stuff. I'm not, I mean, I'm a whitetail guy, but I'm more like a mountain buck whitetail guy. So uh, I am going to have an opportunity to shoot um, whitetail buck here. I don't think I'm allowed to shoot a certain, a handful of deer I'm not allowed to shoot. Like the deer, whatever deer that I do get an opportunity to will probably be something that's just ridiculous. Something that I would never be able to encounter wherever I go. And I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna be like hiding that it's high fence. I think it's, yeah, I'm going here to kill a deer and to eat it. And I will take ownership of that. Like I'm here to kill a deer and eat it. I'm bringing the meat home. Uh, I'm not here for like a trophy hunt. I'm not here to like get a deer to mount or shoulder mount. That's not what I'm here. I'm here to test this broadhead and to see how it flies, how it works, how it responds. Uh, I'm, there are a couple, not a lot, but some Axis deer here. And I've never, I, yesterday was the first day I've ever had Axis burgers and it blew my mind. I want Axis meat. I want to bring it home. There's a few Axis deer here. I'm hoping, ultimately, that's all I really would like to shoot here is an Axis deer. Like that's what I'm after. All right, so the second morning we got in the blind probably about two hours before daylight. Uh, as it was getting light, we could see some awesome deer, um, definitely some mature deer, some immature deer. We're trying to judge their age by their body. We're looking at uh, short legs, a sway in the back, a belly, a neck that starts from the brisket. Obviously, if a deer doesn't have those characteristics, it's young and it needs time to grow. They're trying to cultivate the most mature deer possible. And we're seeing deer after deer, buck after buck. It's an incredible morning. Uh, we're still not quite confident on what we're allowed to shoot. So all the footage that we're gathering this morning uh, is just stuff we're going to bring back to the ranch manager later that day, review the footage and see which deer are we are allowed to shoot or not and kind of just kind of understand more of their judging process for deer's maturity and what kind of justifies or qualifies as a coal buck or a management deer. ground blind or something over a feeder and the feeders are have timers they go off certain times a day like twice a day or something um, they have pivots and agricultural like they have oats and alfalfa and it's not like it's not for farming it's for the deer it's literally agricultural just for the deer so these deer have every opportunity they're supplemented with protein and, and other stuff and minerals and like these deer have everything going for them, except for eventually they're gonna get shot by something if they get big enough. So um, I'm sure there's coal bucks in here and all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't know the deal. I brought my V331 from Matthews. I'm gonna be using an index uh, for whitetail. You can punch these pretty easily. I'm gonna try not to, but I, I still shoot it with the control shot process. I've talked about it on other videos, but that's what this setup works best for. And uh, I'm gonna use this RIP TKO. Pretty sweet setup, 448 grains, 125 up front with this 78 grain collar from Gold Tip. And the FOC is about 16%. Uh, AE Max Stealth, this is the, the knock that comes with the RIP TKOs. Helical, it's a max helical, it's probably like a five, five and a half degree helical. Shot wise, it's gonna be anywhere from like a 20, 30, 40, or 50 yard shot. for a test. 
Texas deer when I talk some more talking body size. That's like a big body deer, man. I wonder how old he is. Old. Yeah. yeah. I'm bummed out, man. I'm not gonna lie. I wanted that's definitely the first look where I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's what we came here for. He might come back tonight. Management program out here in Texas. Dan and I are gonna go sit in the blind this afternoon. This branch has a certain amount of doe tags they have to take every year, so we're gonna go out and see if we can help with population control. First, gotta check this bad boy out first. <laughs> 